question number 30 from the textbook. It reads, a potter is shaping a bowl on a potter's wheel rotating at a constant angular speed. They give you a picture of it. The frictional force between her hands and the clay is 1.5 newtons total. That's important, the fact that that's the total force. How large is her torque on the wheel if the diameter of the bowl is 12 centimeters? So let's answer the first question, what's the torque on the wheel? We've got a picture, kind of a top view of that. Uh, we know that uh, when she applies a uh, frictional force, if we make the assumption that the wheel is rotating this way, then the frictional force has to oppose that. Uh, we can say that if this is a positive direction right here, that the frictional torque must act in the uh, negative direction or the clockwise direction. So let's go ahead and sketch in a force. If this is the force, we'll no uh, notice then that um, the force times this lever arm, this is the lever arm distance D, and these are at right angles to each other here. And therefore, by definition, we know that torque, the torque due to friction in this case, is equal to force times distance, and we have this trigonometric component to deal with the uh, angle uh, between the line of action of the force, which is this red dashed line here and extends here. That's the line of action of the force. And the lever arm, that happens to be 90, so we end up getting the uh, force that she produces, the total force of 1.5 newtons, times this distance. Now the diameter of the potter's wheel is 12 centimeters, so therefore the radius is 0.06, and that's going to be my lever arm. Uh, the, by definition, it's going to be the distance between uh, the line of action of the force and the axis of rotation, which is the radius in this case. 1.5 times uh, 0.06, times the sine of 90, just to kind of be formal, we'll go ahead and uh, put that in here. And uh, when we do all of that, we get a value of uh, 0.09, 0 .090 uh, Newton meters, or uh, 9 times 10 to the minus 2 Newton meters. So we've answered uh, part A, uh, which asked us what the torque that she produced uh, from putting her hands on there. Part B is a little different. The idea is kind of if you shut the motor off, so the uh, how long will it take to come to rest? How long would it take for the potter's wheel to stop if the only torque acting on it is due to the potter's hand? They give you the initial angular velocity of the wheel. It's 1.6 revolutions per second. They give you the moment of inertia of the wheel uh, and the bowl. They tell you is 0.11 kilogram meter per second. Now, later on here, we'll be dealing with problems where you have to find uh, or calculate the moment of inertia, but in this case, they just outright give it to you, 0 0.11 kilogram meters uh, squared. And uh, we know that the initial angular velocity that's been given to us is 1.6 revolutions per second. We'll deal with a conversion to radians per second later. And we also know that the final angular velocity is going to be zero if this thing comes to rest. And we want to find the time that it takes to do that. We're going to need to know the angular acceleration and we're looking for the time. That's essentially uh, what question B has asked. We can figure out the angular acceleration by using um, Newton's second law for rotational dynamics. Torque is equal to I alpha, where we basically have the torque. We just figured it out here in part A. And the moment of inertia is given to us in the problem. So I can say then that the torque over the moment of inertia is going to be equal to our angular acceleration. So we'll get 0 0.09 Newton meters divided by the 0 0.11 value. And this is kilogram meters squared. And that will be equal to our angular acceleration. And we get 0.82 radians per second squared is equal to our angular velocity. Uh, sorry, angular acceleration. So now we have this value, uh, 0.82 rad per second squared. And the last step then will be to recognize, hey, I've got enough information uh, to basically solve this via rotational kinematics. We'll use the second equation, omega final equals omega initial plus uh, angular acceleration times time. Solving for time, I get omega final uh, minus omega initial uh, divided by uh, my angular acceleration is equal to uh, our time. And uh, when I do that, I'll probably need to make uh, a conversion first um, before I plug it in because I initially have revolutions per second.
So I'm going to convert uh, my revolutions per second to radians per second since one revolution is 2 pi radians. I'll ultimately just multiply 2 pi radians over one revolution. And I end up getting uh, 10 radians per second. So now I have my initial angular velocity in radians per second. Uh, so I'm going to get 0 minus my initial angular velocity of 10 radians per second. Uh, and I need to divide it by my angular acceleration. And uh, it looks like I've made a, a sign mistake here. Let me explain. Um, if I put in my 0.82 uh, radians per second squared that I have solved for previously, I get a negative over a positive, which indicates to me that um, that I'm going to have negative. Uh, oops, uh, I made two mistakes now. Um, this is not angular acceleration. That is uh, time. So uh, getting back to the first of the two mistakes, um, I have a negative time value, which uh, doesn't seem right. Let's remember that we called this positive, And therefore, the torque that we produced, therefore, ought to be negative uh, in this case. And if the torque is negative here, that's going to give me a negative uh, angular acceleration. It's slowing down. So the angular acceleration is negative. That gives me a negative in the denominator, and that helps me to deal with my negative in the numerator. I get uh, negative 10 over 0.82 radians uh, per second squared, and I end up getting about 12 seconds. So my final answer is that this thing takes 12 seconds to come to rest when I shut the motor off, but uh, don't move. Uh, hands away from the um, uh, from the potter's wheel.